Alright, so I don't plan on making this video all that long. Um, more than anything, I think now in the aftermath of the find and now that we've all had the chance to, I guess, go through the grieving stages of, of the chest being found, um, and now that I've been able to expand my horizon to Wyoming, whereas before I was locked in on certain areas of Colorado I was convinced the chest was uh, at, uh, I guess some of the thoughts I've had in, I guess, reviewing some of the statements Forrest has made and how certain statements might limit the search area in a way that I don't think a lot of people have considered. Um, one of those clues being the Toledo clue, and I think everyone's quite familiar with the clue. Um, uh, it's been repeated on multiple occasions by Forrest and, and the community alike, and basically the context of the clue was that apparently a woman called Forrest asking for a hint and he told her that the chest was more than 300 miles west of Toledo. Obviously at face value, most, mostly being a joke, uh, considering the entire search area is more than 300 miles west of Toledo. Um, but I've always found it to be an interesting clue because Toledo seems like such a random city to pick out of the Midwest. And on top of that, there was an instance where Forrest actually gave the clue in a significantly different way and I don't think a lot of people are aware of this so if you go back to 2011 and this is the only time Forrest said it this way but in 2011 he actually gave the clue as more than 300 miles southwest of Toledo which drastically changes things because when it's given in that context it does limit the search area and I'm going to show you how so I've drawn this line across the southern edge of Wyoming, and this is the latitude line that corresponds with uh, Toledo, Ohio. In other words, everything north of this line right here, according to that statement by Forrest, is not a candidate for where the chest was located. Now, obviously that rules out a lot of the very popular search areas, including Yellowstone and Lander, and the Bighorn Mountains and basically leaves us with a very small sliver of Wyoming here most of which is desert and high plains and very little of which is forest and uh, mountainous areas and so if that statement is true it has massive implications now I, I, I'll posit a question would Forrest Fenn a man who trained in the Air Force who worked in the Air Force for decades of his life who flew across the country who knows how many times, would he be naive enough to not know, assuming that the chest was placed north of this line, would he be naive enough to not realize his mistake in saying that? Would he actually not realize that Yellowstone is north of Toledo? I don't think Forrest is that dumb. I think a person like him probably knows the geography of the U.S. like the back of his hand. And I just have an extremely difficult time believing that he would just blurt out Southwest in any other context other than possibly being too honest on accident about where the chest was located. And in that case, we suddenly have a lot smaller region to consider here. Um... And, you, you know, you can choose to, to take that quote at face value, but it's written in black and white, and it was said by Forrest Fenn himself. So I'm just using the information we have to try to narrow things down, and that's the information we have. Now, another quote that I think is very interesting that I think gives some credence to this idea of the chess being below this line is when you look at, here's another popular Forrest Fenn quote, um, early on in the chase, he generally referred to the search area as the mountains north of Santa Fe, rather than the later adapted um, uh, the Rocky Mountains north of Santa Fe. And the mountains north of Santa Fe, I guess it depends on how you want to interpret that. Does he mean all the mountains in, in the search area that are north of Santa Fe? Maybe that's all he meant, but I think it's interesting that he initially just said the mountains north of Santa Fe, which to me could potentially be interpreted as the, continu as the contiguous group of mountains north of Santa Fe, which when you look at the big picture here, Santa Fe being down here, uh, to me, when I look at this, the contiguous group of mountains north of Santa Fe seems to encompass 
this area ending on the southern edge of Wyoming. And any mountains to the north of that are kind of out in their own pocket. Now, obviously, there's a lot of leaps being made here, but I'm just saying one interpretation of the mountains north of Santa Fe would be the contiguous mountains north of Santa Fe, which would, I think, give more credence to that theory. Now, another thing Forrest said that I found interesting, uh, I'm going to go back to my war for me. And he, when he was talking about my war for me, he specifically said, if you don't do anything else, read that story. Now, whether he was saying there that that chapter of the book had the most clues or whether that was just his favorite chapter, who knows. But I found it interesting because in that chapter, in the second paragraph, he talks about the millions of visitors' tears washing the, the Vietnam War Memorial. And then at the end of that paragraph, he brings up uh, another curiosity cons to consider is the Lincoln Memorial. And I think a lot of people have assumed that he was referring to the Washington, D.C. Lincoln Memorial. But it turns out that along I-80, there is also a uh, Abraham Lincoln Memorial Monument um, located on I-80 in commemoration of the completion of the Lincoln Highway, which was the first transcontinental highway uh, in the United States, and it marked the high point of that highway in Wyoming. And it was located at the Sherman Summit. Um, this is also the same uh, general route that the Transcontinental Railroad followed, and the high point of that railroad was right in the same area as well. And what I found interesting about that was when I looked up um, the Sherman Summit on Wikipedia, and it turns out that the small town of Sherman arose at the site north of the tracks where the train stopped to change engines. So. What if warm waters uh, have something to do with steam engines? Um, and there's more evidence for that when you look up. I found this term water stop, and a water stop is on a railroad is a place where steam engines, uh, steam trains stop to replenish water. The warm waters being the, the, the water in the steam engines, right? And they halt at these locations. And these steam engines halted at the Sherman Summit on the Transcontinental Railroad, and then after the Lincoln Highway was um, completed, then the warm waters of car radiators, they halted at this Lincoln, uh, at the Sherman Summit to visit the Lincoln Memorial, where, as Forrest mentioned in the first chapter of Why My War for Me, people's tears may have washed the, the monument, and maybe that's why he brought up the Lincoln Memorial in that context. I don't think it's that far-fetched to look at this as a potential warm waters halt that fits the geography limits that we're setting here. Now, um, there's a, a, this particular uh, Lincoln monument. Um, actually, I'll show you here. So uh, it was. This is it right here, and there's a rest stop here where you can go. And there's trailheads located at the rest stop, and there's a very cool mountainous area there. Um, it's kind of a, a giant area. Part of it's called the Pole Mountain area. And then it kind of connects into a place called Vita Wu. And Vita Wu, I looked this up on the internet. Um, this is um, a popular climbing spot, but it was partic It used to be a an Indian, uh, kind of a sacred Indian area. And it, it, the name Vita Wu came from the Arapaho word earthborn. And one thing that Jack said that I th found interesting was the way he found out where Forrest hid the chest is he found out where Forrest wanted to die. And so I looked into some of the quotes about Forrest talking about where he wanted to die. And there was one phrase that came up a couple of times that was a little bit of an odd phrase that I found interesting. And what Forrest said is, I don't understand that question. If I had my way, I would die under a tree somewhere deep in a pine forest and let my body go back to the earth. Again, on another occasion, he said, my plan was to let my body go back to the earth at the place where I hid the treasure. So this is Forrest talking about dying in the context of hiding his treasure, and he says, go back to the earth. Well, Vita Wu means earthborn. So back to the earth, earthborn. Maybe there's a connection there. Maybe that's something that Jack used to narrow it down to this area. I certainly think it's interesting, if nothing else. Now, if we look further into this Vita Wu area, um, 
so as we can see here's the rest area with the monument uh here's the summit uh where the trains would stop and where you know cars have stopped throughout uh, the last century to visit the monument um with their warm radiators i guess where warm waters halt and uh you have the pole mountain area and this road right here is called the happy jack highway this road continues down this way um forrest talked about i think on one occasion if you wear a smile to the chest then you wear you'll wear a grin going home well that might certainly uh, make sense in the context of driving on a happy jack highway and one thing i love about this area is not too far from the lincoln memorial you have a browns landing and what's interesting about this browns landing i guess i found uh on some obscure website that it was named after some fugitive or uh, some outlaw named Brown and he, he hid out in this area for a number of years while the railroad was being constructed. Um, but there's a Brown's Landing here. You can't find this on any other map other than topo maps. And I know Forrest had once said that you need to have the right map to find the treasure chest. Well, maybe it was because you can only find the home of Brown on the right map, which might be the case here. Um, as you can see, this is in the Sherman Mountains and I'm gonna come back to that at the end of this video. Um, so I looked a little further into this location. Um, I'm going to go into 3D mode here and show you something that's mildly interesting. Um, so as you can see, there's some trails that branch off of this Lincoln Memorial. And um, the Brown's Landing area is actually right up at the top of this little canyon here. Brown's Landing is this little flat, lush area up here. Um, there's a popular climbing area called the Beehive. Um, I don't know how popular it is, but there's a this is a climbing wall called the Beehive right here. Um, but anyway, when you look at the geography right here, I'm going to try to make this look as good as possible. Okay, so you look at these mountains right here. And remember the uh, drawing, for the famous drawing on what, my war for me that a lot of people have said maybe they're was a clue here where Forrest uh, signed a picture and drew an X here and an X here. So look at the geography here, and I'm not basing anything, I'm, I'm just kind of spitballing here, but you look at this geography of these mountains and then you go back to what we were just looking at here. It's certainly a, a similar possibility there. Uh, I don't know how much there is to derive from that, but what I thought actually was more interesting, when you come up um, to Brown's Landing up here, and who knows if, you know, if this is the home of Brown, and if it is the home of Brown, where the treasure would be relative to this, but let's just pretend maybe the treasure is somewhere up along this ridge up here, up in these trees on top of these rocky outcrop with this view up here. So one thing I noticed when I was checking out this view was these mountains out in the distance that peek over the ridge. And I thought, what the hell, like, let's go see, you know, maybe that's a notable feature from the spot where the, the treasure is located and maybe there's something in the poem or, or some hint in the book that might point at that. So I, I, I just figured I'd go check this spot out and see what this mountain's called. So I followed the path up to the top here and here we are at this mountain top and I think we gotta go into 2D mode to see what it's called. And now it's not letting me see it. Oh, Clark Peak right here. So remember the chapter looking for Lewis and Clark? And he said that um, so in that chapter, I think they ended up 50 miles from where they started. So I did the measurement and Clark Peak is precisely 50 miles away from Brown Landing, or Brown's Landing. And what's even more interesting um, is that this, even though it's unnamed here, I've, I did my research and this peak is actually named Lewis Peak here. I think I had a website that uh, shows that. So this is referring to Lewis Peak right here and I think it, in the description below it's uh, it's located right next to its higher neighbor Clark Peak so this is Lewis uh, Lewis Peak and Clark Peak right here um, uh, this is L Lewis and Clark so maybe looking for Lewis and Clark is in reference to the mountains you're looking for from the spot where the treasure is located maybe it's a little bit out there but I like that theory and what's even more compelling to me is the Pole Mountain area, which is encompasses this whole Vita Wu and the area next to the Lincoln Memorial, it actually used to be a target and maneuver area used by the Army and the Air Force um, prior to the 1960s, which lines up perfectly with the, the timeline when Forrest would have been in training with the Air Force. And 
certainly is an area that he may have become familiar with during his training. So there's a lot of interesting things that add up to this location here. Um, as far as that climbing wall named the Beehive goes, I know that a lot of people have speculated that uh, when Forrest said that the treasure was found underneath a canopy of stars, that there must be some sort of star relation to the correct solve. So there's something called the Beehive Cluster located in the Cancer constellation. Um, uh, and uh, that's so, and, and Forrest had cancer, and some, <laughs> maybe there was some weird cryptic reference to this, where um, the fact that it was found underneath a canopy of stars was in reference to it being found underneath that cliff face called the Beehive. I don't know. I'm, you know, obviously a lot of this is super out there, but certainly enough interesting elements to this. And one last thing I wanted to share um, in regards to this uh, solve here. I'm going back to our location here. I just want to type in a search here, and that's Terry Peak, Wyoming. This is located just um, near Cheyenne, Wyoming, and this peak is actually visible from uh, Brown's Landing, which might account for Terry Scant. Um, so a lot of interesting things. Um, like I said, you know, until Jack gives us further information, we're all kind of guessing here, but. I like this southern Wyoming area and I particularly like this I-80 um, region because, you know, as I said, I-80 goes through Toledo, Ohio and, uh, and Forrest said the treasure was southwest of Toledo and ignore that at your own peril. So that's all I had to say.